Hello, welcome to Accounting Hub. I'm Professor George Skyping, PhD in Accounting, and our topic today is sales forecast using linear regression. So first of all, there are tons of forecast models that we can use, but we will be focusing on linear regression because we can do it on Excel. Uh, time series, for instance, another very good one, but much better on other software. So if you are using Microsoft Office, uh, linear regression, in my opinion, is a very, very good one if we know how to do it. And why do we need sales forecast for budget? For instance, the most important tool for sales budget is sales forecast. So let's see how it works on Excel. So here, I grab data from 10 years from a public company in the US, Quarterly Info. Uh, we will not go with the name because it doesn't, uh, doesn't worth it, we don't need it. So what do we have here? Date and revenue on T0, that is revenue on this quarter. So a lot of people does this one. Oops. Select everything goes on insert line here and then right click add trend line and then we go display equation that our forecast equation and our r square that the maximum is one and should be more than 0 0.7. So this is a, not a bad one. We have some numbers here that are not quite close, but not a good one. However, we need to take care a little bit because, okay, we are working with all of the data. Usually we live one year away to test our model to see if it is good or bad. So let's redo it, taking out the, the three. Okay, let me move around here again. And then let's delete this one, by the way. And insert here. And let's add the train line. And then display equation and the R square. Oh, the R square went a little bit down. But okay, let's leave it here. So let's do it better. So, okay, we have no additional info. If we have more info, we add it. But the revenue today is based on the previous period. So the previous quarter. So that's why I delete the first number because we have a second variable called revenue T minus one. That is the previous quarter. So this one matches with this one. This one matches with this one and so on. And then we can add a uh, variable for seasonality. Because, okay, if it is a retail company, uh, we have seasonalities, or even manufacturing companies, they have seasonalities. So what do we do? We create one dummy variable for quarters. How many dummy variables? Number of quarters minus one. Why minus one? Because, okay, I create here a variable for first, second, and third quarter. We will compare these variables with the last quarter of the year. If these revenues goes up or down, considering the uh, considering our quarters, and then it is basically yes or no. So here, uh, March thirtieth, it is the first quarter. So yes, one, no, zero. So yes for the first quarter, no for the second, no for the third. And then June, no for the first, yes for the quarter, no for the third. September, no, no, yes. And December, no, no, no. So one, 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 zero, 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 one, 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 zero, 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 
and then we move on. Just like a very beautiful matrix here. Huh? So, okay, how do we do that? We go on data, data analysis. If you don't have data analysis, how you can add it? Because it is there, it is only hidden. And by the way, guys, if you go on the video description, you will find this Excel file. So enjoy. How do we add the data analysis if it is not here? Go on file. Options, and depending on your Excel version, options can be here or around here. So options. Addings. Excel addings. Go. And then analysis tool pack. If I delete it, it will be just like here and go OK. It will go away. So let's do it again. And then analysis tool pack. We have the data analysis here. So data analysis, a lot of stats options here. Let's go on regression. Y range and X range. Y range. What do we want to forecast? The revenue. So revenue. And then again, we don't consider the last year. I will explain you later why. And, and then we start with revenue. X revenue team minus one and go on. And we also leave here. Some tips never leave blank columns here you select with control it will not work so they must be together continuous and then labels and excel will consider the first row as the label and how many variables can we use at least the number of data here we have 10 years minus one nine so nine times four 36 Minus one that we are leaving behind, 35, so we can add around 10, 12. 35 would be the maximum, but it's not good. So usually take the total of your sample, divide by three, and you will be good. So here we are more than enough. And then, okay. And remember that R square that we have here. The R square is here. If you go to some stacks guy, the best one is the adjusted R square. That is the one that we will be working with. So it must be more than 0 0.7. So yes. A second metric, it is the p-value. So we don't consider intercept. All of ones here on green must be lower than 0 0.05. And here we have very low numbers. If it is more than 0 0.5, the variable is bad. So you need to come back to your data, delete it, and run the regression again. So here is our formula. So let's rename here, data. And now regression. So okay, what is our formula? Revenue equal to 12,578.33 plus 1.040081 times revenue T minus 1 minus, that is interesting, 24,526.9 times Q1. So what does it mean, this coefficient here? When we are in the first quarter, our sales are on average $24,500 lower than the, uh, the fourth quarter. Minus 11,835.4 times Q2. Or second quarter, the revenues are on average $11,800 lower than fourth quarter. That's why we leave the fourth quarter. And minus 10,772.5 times Q3. So, okay, that is our 
equation. And let's go here on both equations. But here, this x is this number here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the last number would be the 34. So we have 34 numbers here. And then the 34th is 113. 113 here, the 34th. So let's work on the forecast. So forecast based on trend line. So the forecast based on trend line will be, so this first one here is the point one. So it will be. So let's add a column here, call it number one. And then that is why you have it there. One, two, three. And then the forecast based on trend line, it will be equal to eight, eight, eight. 0.4 times, whoops, times the number. And then we move on until the 38th. But these ones, they are our, we are forecasting them. So actually we will be using, why do we leave these four away? Because, okay, we are not, we don't know it, we will forecast it, just like we were on the previous year. And there is a very important accuracy measure, call it the MAP. So what is the MAP? Medium absolute percent error. So equal ABS, forecast minus actual divided by actual. So here it is 82%, and then we copy and paste. And we call the, the period here as the training and here as the testing. So here, what will we go? MAPE, average MAPE on training or MAPE on training and MAPE on testing. And then testing will be this one. So let's, and then we will compare both methods, by the way. Okay, 22 and 22%, 22 and then the average, it will be here. 12. Okay, 12% 12 average error. So, okay, now let's go forecast on based on regression. So, okay, we go to our formula. So, equal coefficient F4 plus 1.04 F4 again times the previous quarter plus Q1 F4 because we will not be moving it times Q1 plus Q2 times Q2 plus, oh, very high, for, great formula here, times Q3. And so let's go on format here and let's do it. And then the same format here. So okay. And then the May based on regression 
That is the absolute difference between minus revenue divided by revenue. And here we have Okay, but here we are facing some problems. So here we are is like better, but here on the uh, here is our training. So we are based on our numbers here or there is another way to do it is okay the first one will be the same and then we will consider the actual revenue as the previous forecast so we will consider the previous forecast as our new revenue so here instead of data c39 that is our C here, we consider this data here and then we go around here. And then we can come around here, but then we lose a lot of accuracy. So here, that is what we usually do and then let's create a new chart here revenue all of them uh forecast based on trend line and forecast based on regression and let's see how they fit See how the forecast regression here, it is more accurate. The behavior of our forecast is much better than this one here. And this one is quite similar because, okay, we are going back to some trend, but we are not capturing the seasonality. And then, so, only revenue and here our forecast. So here, usually, the regression gives us better forecast. You can go on train line if you want, only do some fast forecasts, and you can do that as well. But this is another very very good way to do it okay guys that's it thank you so much questions or comments leave it here or email me at skarpin at gmail.com have a very nice day and god bless you